Welcome to Engineering is in Our DNA, a podcast series where we talk about the next in engineering that is powering the future for businesses across the world. Sumit Ravel, the Zap Platform Tribe Leader at Emphasis, and Suresh Nair continue their discussion on the need for platformization today. They elaborate on the Emphasis Zap services and how our engineering mindset and front to back transformation approach ensures faster innovation for enterprises today. I know you've been, your team's been doing a ton of work helping clients on the journey, right? So do you want to talk a bit about what you've been doing? Yeah. So I think most importantly, what we want to do is bring the right technology enablers to stitch the most important value proposition for our customers, right? And in doing that, we've learned what is most essential is to build a strong foundation or a chassis, right? With an emphasis, what we have done successfully for a few of our large enterprise customers are, we are helping them build a foundational framework or the chassis with core capabilities, which will allow them to really onboard technology solutions out there and compose the whole business use cases much more effectively, right, within the enterprise. So doing this is, in a way, right, the way we think of it is we call it the front-to-back model, uh, what we what we at Empress is how we think of, right. So what we have done is we have segregated the complex core monoliths. We extract the, the core dependency of business logic out of it into a very strong intelligence layer, which can be expanded using a microservice kind of architecture. Then you bring out the dependency on your data assets out there. You identify your data assets into domains. And then you start saying what is a system of record versus what a system of truth. What's your functional data versus what's your operational data. What's your analytical data. So how you manage that data into a separate layer out there. Versus how do you manage the whole experience and the personalization based on the personas and the role out there is very different. And then how do you bring this together and at the same time manage an ecosystem where there is an event architecture which is monitoring all of this, saying what are the events which are happening within my ecosystem and what should I do to respond to those events. And lastly, in terms of how do you have a continuous feedback mechanism flowing through this, which is linked to your business goals, KPIs and all. And that we term as something called as observability, right? So that's like how you manage the system. How do you manage what events, how you're scaling your systems out there, how you are healing against scenarios, how you're responding to the ecosystems, the journeys and the changes out there. So I think that's the engineering aspect of it. And it's truly becoming with the modern day technology of cloud AI. There's so much happening, right? So in fact, technology is, is enabling all of this now at speed. So I think that's been really an interesting journey what we are seeing customers taking with us here. So And I think it's it's been very helpful. Would you want to share some of the success stories in recently we have had with few of our large customers from a domain perspective, Suresh? So, yeah, and following from what you're saying, right, that whole loose coupling kind of stuff, you know, based on linking events. And we're seeing, um, like, I'm going to take two industries, take banking first, right? So there's sort of two trends that we're seeing. One is the banks are carving out business capabilities and handing them off to vendors, right? If you take, like, SaaS providers who do know your customer as a service, we're seeing banks actually carving out their KYC function and handing it off to a SaaS provider or handing off their card production capability and handing it off to a provider. So that's part of what you can do with platformization. So because they can monitor what the partner is doing, that whole fear of giving it off to someone and it's a black box, that's going away, right? And to the event notification and stuff you're talking about, they're constantly aware of the progress, you know, on the other side. So in the card production example, they know when the company gets the uh, request for the card, when the card was produced and gets shipped out, uh, when the customer receives it, if they're asking for courier delivery. So, you know, that, that sort of event coupling sort of enabling that, right? On the other side, Banks are packaging their capabilities and making it available outside of banking, right? So there's the Apple announcement around their new buy now, pay later offering. The banks that are underwriting that basically are packaging their underwriting capability and making it available so that Apple can use it, 
it wasn't something that banks were comfortable doing in the past. So it's again, it's whole, it's part of that whole platformization and what's possible in platformization. They're, they're relying on Apple to build that, do the KYC kind of activity, make sure that it's a legitimate customer. So the bank just has to worry about the underwriting piece of it. So it's simplifying that ecosystem dramatically, right? Um, Web3, you know, we're seeing the impact of that in uh, businesses like logistics. So increasingly, if you look at the whole supply chain, it's being broken up. In the past, you would have to go talk to the individual entities involved in getting a shipment from point A to point B. Today, that's getting completely automated. A lot of logistics providers are becoming multimodal. They they are even if they if like if they've got a fleet of aircraft or they've got a fleet of trucks, they don't have their own warehouses. They can use platformization to connect to someone else, get that capability. They end up having more complete offerings than they had in the past. And you know, on, so on one side, people who own the customer relationship are able to assemble services from multiple people. They don't bother building those capabilities on their own. And then companies that offer a particular capability, let's say managing a warehouse, they don't have to worry about getting customers. They're relying on the aggregators to do that for them. It's a very different world out there. Becoming part of one of those ecosystems is sort of absolutely critical to your roadmap going forward. So I think, you know, platformization is going to be the way that businesses function going forward. Essentially, it's not not a choice anymore. It's, it's a question Push. about uh, speed agility and uh, building the right foundation for your enterprise is now. And I think COVID, if not anything else, has fast forwarded 2030 to 2020, at least in terms of the whole digital enablement for the businesses, right? So it's no more a choice. Every business is a digital business. And Uh we at Emphasis are thinking of why a strong foundation of a platform is really, really required for you to become a digital enterprise, right? So I think that's how we are shaping up. I would want to wrap up with today with our our conversation here and would be interested in learning some of our listeners' feedback in terms of what interesting platform journeys have they embarked on, what have been their learnings, what have been their success stories around it, and would love to be a part of those journeys and see how we can probably help some of them in this roadmap. Thank you.